I don't think a single team had ever come back after losing the first leg. It's not easy, it's, it, it almost feels like you're getting cheated in a way. They were so close to losing it, I don't think we want to be in that situation again as a club. We didn't play well on that game, but got the result. That's Derby for you, it's just everything about the city is the club. This is my good friend Luke Pingo. Massive Derby fan. Yeah. Well, we're at Pride Park right now, Luke. Can you take us to where you sit? Yeah, just up here. It's, it's not that far away. We're just here. And um, I've only had a season ticket this season because of university, you know, COVID, stuff like that. And now there's a future of the club. You know, we can see the next 10 years with uh, David Clowes as the owner. You know, it's going to be great. So how did you get into supporting Derby County? I mean, it's a one club city, so it's really easy because there is no other choice, essentially. You've got Chesterfield, you know, 20 minutes away. And, you know, it's a huge historic club. I think that's one thing. You look at the other teams in this league, you know, nobody else has got this. Nobody else has got a stadium of this uh, stature. It is an amazing stadium, to be fair. Is it, you've got family and stuff like that that kind of brought you into, you know, from when you were very, very young that said, introduced you to Derby and said, this is your club? Or? Yeah, both my uncle's season ticket holders, so they're, they're up here on the East Stand as well, so. I think it's just been one of them things in the family. We always talk about Derby. It's, it's kind of a thing when we meet up as a family, we talk about, so that's, that's, that's Derby for you. It's just everything about the city is the club. So what are your yeah. first memories of supporting the club? Uh, probably Idiarquez. I think he was one of the you know, main good players when I started watching it in the 2000s. It was, it was a nice club back in the early 2000s because there wasn't any complicated factors with the financials or anything. It was just enjoying the club and having fun on the day. What was it like being a supporter then? Um, you, you always knew that there was like that Premier League past in the 90s um, and then going into the 2000s, just trying to keep stable and hopefully go up towards the uh, playoffs. So Luke, this is obviously where you sit most yeah. weeks. Um, can you every, tell us what it was every like? own week. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's why I said most weeks. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell us what it was like as a fan to be relegated because of a points deduction? It's tricky because you can't blame the players, you can't blame the manager. It's, it's what's happened off the pitch and the rules of the EFL, you know, that's, that's another factor, but that's what you've got to deal with. It brings a real good unity to the fans and the players because you, you understand that they're trying the hardest and sometimes it's enough and sometimes it isn't. The spirit seemed incredible with the team. How was it with the fans? Yeah, definitely. I think you can definitely tell the difference between pre-points deduction and post. The fans, the level has raised another 10, 20%. You can see that people just care a lot more because they, they were so close to losing it. I don't think we want to be in that situation again as a club, um, financially or you know stability-wise. But I think David Klaus is doing a terrific job with what he's done in the last you know two years or so. Yeah, it seems like he's really, really mm -hmm. um, kind of built up a community spirit and yeah. things like this. You're seeing the hub that's obviously opened within the stadium and there's lots within the uh, sort of local community uh, that's kind of happened with the club as well. There's also, I, I guess, maybe because of finances or maybe just because of the culture. Um, there's a lot of the youth players come up, brought through, so it's kind of more mm. local talent than just trying to make signings and things like that. Is that kind of... Do fans feel that? Do fans feel more of a connection with the club and the team? 100%. I think like during that late end of Mel Morris's era, very few academy players came through. So he had like the Will Hughes in like 2015-16 and then after that there wasn't anyone until like Cashin and Sibley came through. So I, I like that we are using the academy a lot more because we, we do bring some brilliant players into the club, which is great to see. You care about them more when they're on the pitch as well. You, you don't want to slate them as much and stuff like that because you actually know that they care as much as you do. What would you say is sort of your favourite memory mm. of the club as a fan? That's true. I mean, like, in terms of, like, crazy moment is the semi-final against Leeds when we were... I don't think a single team had ever come back after losing the first leg and we somehow beat that Bielsa team, got to the final. You know, it would have been nice if you won the final because then we wouldn't have hit the... Uh, Aston Villa. Yeah. Massive, yeah. I mean, that game, if you look at it, Aston Villa are in a very similar financial situation where if they lost that game, they could have had the same impact we had after that. So, you know, that was literally a, toy, a coin toss between who goes up and who destroys the club kind of thing. That was the, uh, the final. But yeah, I think that, that moment was like a peak for me. Um, but I think this season in particular, it's, it's been really nice to see Paul Warren have, like got his tactics right now. We're in second in the league, you know, Praying we stay up. Um, not per staying up. <laughs> 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 staying up. 
<laughs> it's in the Sounds Oval fans. <laughs> yeah. I remember watching exactly. the Oval here. When, when you sit here, you sat with sort of friends and people that you know, or, or people that you've learned literally to by know. Myself. And, 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 okay. I, I, I literally come by myself at the minute. No, but, but even like the people next to you, like, to celebrate to them, together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. So yeah. you've kind of got that togetherness mm -hmm. when, you're in the, when you're in the stadium, you know, every home game. Yeah, this season you can definitely tell we're in the right position to get promoted. Um, it's, it's us, Bolton, and maybe like Peter Barnsley, but I think we, us and Bolton are the two at the minute that are looking most likely to get that second place. But it's exciting, you know, even if we get playoffs, that'll be fun, you know. <laughs> we're not going to be in the same situation where we were a few years ago. We're going to be a together team going in the right direction, so I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, support the club as it is. Do you feel, do the fan base feel, as much as there's the expectation to get out of League One, there's the genuine we will do it, um, we're excited. I think the, the result against Bolton tells you everything you need to know about the resilience. Like, we didn't play well on that game, but got the result, and I think that's what it's about at this stage of the season. You got, yeah, I think, I think this is the best chance we've had in years of getting, well, the last two seasons anyway, getting promoted. So let's see how we go. When you're coming here to Pride Park, is it, is it louder? Is there sort of mm -hmm. more of a, come on, like there's more of a, genuine reason to cheer on this amazing team. Yeah, I think Bolton game, I think we got the three points the fans did. We, we had flags on, on uh, everyone's end and everyone was shouting, screaming and uh, foot, like 32,000 in League One in English football. I think that's just ridiculous and I hope it continues. I want to be you know, at that 30,000 mark every single week. Obviously it's not the easiest for everyone but uh, as many people get in, the more likely we're going to get a good result. That's, that's how I see it as a fan. Luke, just tell us a little bit about the sort of toughest moments about being a fan of this club. I mean, it was like, it was, it was a case of if David Klaus didn't take over the club, it was gone within weeks. It was like end of June or whatever. It was crazy. That end of the season, obviously, we just got relegated. Didn't know, we had about four or five players. And then just like, all of a sudden, David Klaus came out and went to save the club. He's, he's literally Superman. He's, he's coming and... It would have gone, that's the thing. It would have fully gone out of the Football League and I'm just forever grateful for what he's done. I think it's, it is kind of crazy that situation could have happened if it wasn't for him. That, that could have easily been a situation that a lot of clubs will see. And we've seen the likes of Berry mm -hmm. be liquidated and go and you look around and look at this stadium, it's incredible, it's, it's very modern, it's massive. You've got a huge fan base. It's, a, it's one of the oldest clubs, it, it would be in, impossible to envision liquidation and going was there talk and you remember on the on the you know within group chats or anything like that about you know where will fans go what will you do well that's what i was, I was like who am i going to support if derby goes i was like i was looking at chesterfield i was looking at burton albion i was like i'd rather derby stay to be honest because yeah. it's like i don't know it's it's tricky because you don't know behind the scenes with the efl and stuff like that what what do they saying in terms of liquidation what would have happened going into that first League One season so you look at it on that way I think from that toughest moment the last two years you can definitely see an upward trajectory which is great. This isn't my first time coming to Pride Park but can you tell me a little bit about sort of the stadium in terms of fans you know what fans would sit over here what fans would go over there? Well, yeah I th I'd say you've got your family stand on the north that's where I growing up like you know my dad and my mum would bring me as a kid coming to games I remember l losing like 4-0 to West Brom stuff like that you know really fond memories early on um, and then east stand where we are it's, it's probably like it's trying to like it's the middle literally you've got the absolute die hard end at the south stand which I would like to sit in but I'd like to save my voice as well because the, the fans are going for 90 minutes screaming, chanting, and I love it, but my voice is needed for my job, so I can't really um, go in that end. And I like the view, you know, it's a great view of this situation. You've got both goals, and you can see everything. You can see if any substitutions are happening. Um, I've sat in the West End a few start, uh, times. The problem is, I find, you need to go up like two sets of stairs, and I'm far too lazy to do that. You have to go, because <laughs> the second tier, you have to literally go up like so many stairs. So I'd rather sit this end. I've sat in the... Uh, Good and Guthrie stand as well. That's that's a good view actually. I do like that corner. Uh, but again, I just I think this is for me um, where I like to watch the game. It's where all my family have sat with their season tickets yeah, over the where years. Where are your uncles? Where so my uncle is just down here. Okay. Um, he sadly passed away from cancer. But oh, that's sorry. sorry, that, sorry it's sorry. nice to sit here and just think, oh, how would he be enjoying this game, mm. kind of thing. Um, and then my other uncle is about just over there, kind of thing. He comes with his uh, my nephew, so. Yeah, it's nice to be all in the same end as away. Um, 
But yeah, we, we all get the same perspective of the wins. <laughs> I'm very fortunate because I do see other fans in the League One. You know, I went to Bristol Rovers the other weekend. <laughs> Growing up as a kid going out, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> okay, we'd like to end on quite an important question. Mm -hmm. Are the good days coming back? I think they are, yeah. I think you can definitely tell that the overall personality of the players, I think that's one of the main characteristics I've seen in Paul Bourne's signings. So many of the players, I think Mendes Lang, for example, is a perfect example. You can see he really does love the club at the minute and he's played his best football. He's, you know, top assister in the league. And hopefully, you know, we're going up to the Premier League in the next 10 years. That's, that's the aim for me. Will that happen as the club? We'll have to wait and see. And fans must be excited then, come on. We'll have to wait and see. I, th I think some Forest fans will be happy to get the derby though back. I think it, you know, missing those kind of games where you're against complete rivals. We kind of had it with Bolton, but it wasn't that much of a rivalry that much, but it was a great atmosphere. Um, and that's, you know, the memories that you get with Derby, you know, just having those great wins against your rivals. Fantastic, let's wrap the good times back. Excellent.